video will provide an overview of informal adult education and will summarize the various types of adult education. During this video, please reflect on the following analysis questions. How is informal education defined? What are the main characteristics of informal adult education? What are some examples and settings of informal adult education? And where does informal adult education occur in Canada? Coombs and Ahmed define informal education as the lifelong process by which every person acquires and accumulates knowledge, skills, attitudes, and insights from daily experiences and exposure to the environment. The European Centre for Development and Vocational Training defines informal education as learning that results from daily life activities related to work, family, community, or leisure. It is not structured in terms of learning objectives, learning time, or learning support, and typically does not lead to certification. Informal learning may be intentional, but is often non-intentional, or incidental or random. Informal adult education is often spontaneous and unplanned. Unlike formal and non-formal adult education, which are often seen as organized forms of learning, informal education tends to be a non-organized form of learning. Informal adult education results from the daily experiences at home, in the community, or at work. This type of adult education is often overlooked as valid learning and is often the most difficult to quantify or track. Chagrinsky identified three types of informal learning. The first is self-directed learning, which refers to learning projects carried out by individuals who want to learn something and are aware that they have learned something. An example of self-directed learning is an adult who wants to learn more about a historical event and to do so reads books and archival documents, watches movies and videos, and goes to museums and talks to people who have participated or witnessed those events. The second type of learning is incidental learning. This happens when a learner does not have any intention to learn something out of a specific experience, but after the experience, the learner becomes aware that learning has taken place. An example of incidental learning is an adult watching the news and there is a documentary about the unfair treatment of an ethnic group received during a particular period, a historical fact that the viewer was unaware of before. The final type of informal education is socialization, which refers to the internalization of values, attitudes, behaviors, or skills that occur during everyday life. An example is a group of adults that meet regularly to play a particular sport or game and after many years become particularly skillful without noticing that it was a long learning process. Informal education is a process by which adults acquire and accumulate knowledge, skills, attitudes, and insights from daily experiences and exposure to the environment. Examples of informal adult education can include visits to museums, listening to radio broadcasting or watching TV programs, reading books, journals and magazines, or attending conferences. Another example of informal adult education includes when mentors instruct novices in spontaneous learning situations, such as guiding them in acquiring job skills or in community development activities. Generally, informal education is unorganized and often unsystematic. It accounts for the great bulk of any person's total lifetime learning. The 2004 Work and Lifelong Learning Survey showed that 91% of adults in Canada participate in intentional informal learning activities 14 hours per week on average. It also found that 84% of workers in Canada find informal learning the most important source of job-specific knowledge. Nevertheless, informal learning is still often an invisible part of adult education in Canada. For many years, only formal adult education was viewed as being valid. It used to be that only adult education that took place in accredited institutions and was verified by grades and transcripts was considered credible. Non-formal and informal adult education was often discounted or assumed to be merely an addition to formal adult education. However, the situation is changing in the 21st century with more and more non-formal and informal types of adult education being acknowledged and valued both in Canada and abroad. The recognition of non-formal and informal learning in Canada is most commonly known as Prior Learning Assessment and Recognition, or PLAR. PLAR is used by a range of organizations, including educational institutions for program admission and academic credit, regulatory bodies for licensing and certification, and employers for recruitment and advancement decisions. There is currently no federal legislation requiring the recognition of non-formal and informal learning in Canada. However, there has been support for PLAR at all government levels for several years, which is directly linked to the need to maximize the use of Canada's labour supply. 
Some Canadian initiatives designed to support PLAR include the Red Seal program, which helps to provide greater mobility across Canada for skilled tradespersons, the Foreign Credential Recognition program, which promotes the recognition of immigrant qualifications, and the Mobility and Transferability Pan-Canadian Protocol, in which publicly funded colleges have agreed to maximize the recognition and transfer of learning acquired through formal education, workplace training, and work and life experience. Today, as we have seen, there is a new interest in the concept of formal, non-formal, and informal adult education due to the growing emphasis on lifelong learning. Lifelong learning sees learning as taking place not simply in schools, but throughout one's entire life, in many different locations, formats, and at many different times. Thus, formal, non-formal, and informal adult education play an important role in making the lifelong learning agenda a reality. Please reflect on the following synthesis questions. What are the unique characteristics of informal adult education? Why is informal adult education the most difficult to track and recognize? How does informal adult education contribute to the goal of lifelong learning? And what is your experience with informal adult education? And how does it compare to other learning experiences you've encountered?